here we are at Kevin Butler's studio, laying down the pit of suffering. Yeah, we knew Kevin was going to knock it out of the park once we heard that the Hinayana work that he's done. I mean, those are our boys, and we love everything they do. Yeah. And yeah, he did a fantastic job with that, so we were excited to work with him again. So Kevin mastered our last EP, but this time we went to him uh, to help us track everything. And so far, so fucking good. We're excited, man. This is ridiculous how cold it is. Yeah. Oh, Believe it or not, we are in Texas. Here we are. Everything's frozen. The fucking, I'm slipping on the grass. My hands are shivering. My mustache is fucking getting icicles on it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Texas. What's up? My name's Guillermo. I play bass and hoard lots of amps. What's up? This is TJ. Damn, that was dumb as shit. <laughs> What's up? This is TJ. Vocals for Forbode. I'm Eddie, I play guitar in Forebode. What's up? I'm Zach. I play drums. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Tasty. Very excited that this song is making it onto this recording and it actually could have made it onto our first one um, because it was the first song that we actually wrote collectively as a band. The uh, initial tryout or audition for me and Zach, uh, we, we just played through uh, the three songs that they had already started working on and after we had worked those out and, and spent some time with them, we still had some more time 
to jam. So I introduced a riff that I had written a few years before I met the guys. Uh, and it's in a kind of a weird feel and uh, it's not a super obvious pull where the drum should be for it. Uh, so I was curious how people would navigate the riff and we actually wrote the whole song on the spot that evening and uh, it was a good sign that the chemistry was right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to record Metal Slug too, just because that's, uh, for this version of the band, you know, with Eddie and, and uh, Zach, that is, it's literally pretty much the first song that we wrote um, as a band. Uh, so when Eddie and Zach came in to, to jam with us for the first time, they both came in on the same day, uh, we just started jamming, you know, we went over some of the stuff that they had learned that we had already kind of established. And then um, we just decided to jam. I was like, hey, I have this riff. And then within what seemed like 10 minutes, we were playing what is pretty much the finalized version of Metal Slug, which is really cool, kind of showed the chemistry that we all had together right away. Um, so it's really exciting to finally lay that one down and put that one on a record. That's going to be great. I think one of the things that's most important about the music that Forebode makes uh, has to do with the focus on melody and harmony. I feel like in our genre, a lot of the time, melody and harmony get overlooked. And I think that's one of the things that we, we try to focus on to make the song stronger and to make the sound more musical and more uh, beautiful, even though it's an abrasive genre. One of these songs was the first song that we ever wrote together, Metal Slug. We wrote that at, or most of it at our first practice, my audition for the band. Um, and since then it's been the same way we've kind of stuck with the same process as far as how we write where somebody's got a riff and then the other person says I've got a riff too and they work together and then we just kind of hash out the order and then the dynamics of it and like how fast it's gonna be how slow it's gonna be how how is it gonna flow yeah so the album that we're recording right now as we speak is called the pit of suffering um, to me is kind of my way in uh, approaching mental health in a way. Uh, I think that the world has taught everyone that they're safe in their little bubble and that um, you know no matter what happens to you that everything's gonna be okay um, but it's not gonna be okay and I think that uh, really we haven't experienced our worst pain in our lives our lives as of yet um, so the pit of suffering is kind of about that it's about basically coming to terms and being okay with the fact that you're not going to be able to circumvent or navigate through great pain but you do have to understand that it's going to happen and and find a way to be okay not being okay so as far as musical approach, um, I definitely have, uh, you know, I'm in tuned with my gear. I'm really into uh, the amps that I use, the pedals that I use. Um, I feel like I have a specific ear for that part of it. Um, but as far as playing my instrument, I'm definitely, you know, not a, I don't go with, with a theory most of the time, or I, I really just do everything by ear and feel, and that's kind of what I've leaned on. Um, aside from, you know, kind of my weird self-taught technicalities on, on the bass and you know, instead of using a pick, using my finger and beating the crap out of my finger most of the time. I don't know, I, I, I just really just go with what I feel is, is comfortable and what I feel is feels right when I play. Um, and it's worked out pretty well so far. I mean, Eddie is a very, very, you know, highly t educated musician, you know, obviously a very, very, uh, very, very powerful tool to have in a band like that. And just the fact that I've been able to kind of hang with him and we understand each other that means that maybe my approach isn't as crazy as I you know, once thought it was. First one comes in, you have the wah pedal, which I didn't really use on this record at all. Um, but you have the uh, Nerd Knuckle effects, Ill Omen, um, boost slash overdrive. It just kind of boosts my other pedals, boosts my clean signal, and if I turn up the gain on it, I can get a nice crunchy distortion out of it if I want. 
Um, my main effect has always been the Benefuzz, uh, again by Nerd Knuckle Effects. Uh, this is actually number seven that he ever built. The first run he ever did, he built ten, and I was able to get number seven out of it. And I've been using that ever since. Uh, so this is my, I guess, signature fuzz that I love. Um, and this one is brand new. I actually just debuted it in the studio. Uh, it just came out a few weeks ago. It's the Fuzzlord HM6, which is a clone, an upgraded clone of the uh, Boss HM2, the Swedish, you know, chainsaw death metal distortion. Um, I love it for bass. It cuts through really, really nice. Uh, you know, just uh, gives me that, that kind of that definition on uh, on the bass notes without uh, you know, with still giving me that that really aggressive distortion. Nothing getting lost, uh, which is great. Uh, and then of course the Blood Moon uh, reverb. Uh, it's actually a the Blood Moon reverb is actually a Blood Moon and a Chrome uh, reverb or um, by Mr. by uh, Mr. Black Pedals in Portland. Um, I can choose two different types of reverbs for this one of them being kind of a bassier you know more low-end retention type uh, reverb and then the other one is a uh, more decay kind of uh, spacey you know crazy reverb and I used both on this record um, and then the other chain is way more simple it just has the uh, moon farmer effects generator another custom built box by nerd knuckle effects um, and that goes into the uh, Worshipper slash Gremlin effects uh, rat pedal, which I which I love as well. I kicked that on a few times during the record, and that just dirties up my clean signal. So one side is where all where the bulk of my effects go. The other one is mostly just clean, unless I click this thing on, and then it turns that side into you know rat distorted uh, goodness. So that's great. Um, another good good one to highlight is uh, this thing, which has been with me forever. It's a a custom four-way uh, buffered switcher by Nerd Knuckle Effects as well. If you, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I love everything that Brad does. Um, every All of his pedals that I've owned have been super solid. Um, I have a few that I took off the board out of just curiosity for like the Fuzz Lord and you know the other and the Rat pedal, but um, I'll never get rid of them. You know I'll find something else to use them for just because they're so good. So I definitely recommend checking out Nerd Knuckle Effects does fantastic work. Yeah. I brought four guitars with me today to the recording studio. Um, I think the thought was uh, that I was going to go with the main guitar that was going to be most comfortable for me, but there's a couple of parts. Uh, one of them is the solo in Pit of Suffering. Um, I have this dime bag guitar with a whammy bar on it, and I tend to get a little carried away with the whammy bar whenever I play one, so. That's why you might notice live, I'm not using a whammy bar a lot of the time because I would be overusing it. But I used it in the solo um, when I was first writing it and it felt like it just needed to be there. So I brought that guitar just for this one chunk of the one solo for today. So you can listen for the whammy bar on The Pit of Suffering. <laughs> So the theory behind this particular tone is stacking gain. Uh, there's um, usually two overdrives that are always on. In this case I have a Tube Screamer and a Centaur Clone Clone by Idiot Box FX. This is uh, the Tube Screamer here at a lower uh, gain level and then this is slightly higher with the output all the way up. With that I get a thicker, chunkier tone uh, with two stacked overdrives. 
On top of that, I'll occasionally hit one of these two. This is uh, the new Worshipper pedal. It's a rat, 80s rat clone. And this is uh, another Idiot Box FX D4 distortion. That's like a JCM 800 style tone. Um, and these are good for kind of searing over the top of the mix for leads. A lot of times I'll combine the distortion with this as a, a clean boost from Earthquaker devices. And then this is my fuzz, my main fuzz that I use. It's a uh, germanium fuzz. Uh, Christian from Whores uh, came up with this particular pedal. The right side is a tone control, which is great. Uh, the left side is a really awesome germanium fuzz. So a lot of times I'll combine the two overdrives with the fuzz. Uh, like in Devil's Do, it's going to be pretty much those three pedals on the whole time. And the only time-based effect I have is the delay. And occasionally I hit the uh, octave as well, the OC3. I like that because it is a digital octave and it has better tracking on the low note. Uh, other than that, I use wah for, for some tone adjustments on leads. And uh, this is a noise suppressor and a tuner. They don't contribute much tone-wise. Pedals for the mandem. <laughs> Pedals, Pedals for the mandem. We had a few amazing shows uh, before all the COVID stuff hit, and um, one of my personal favorites was when we played with Resin and Loom at the Lost Well, and it was a special night musically because Resin and Loom did their collaborative performance together, but also did individual sets. But at one time, there was two bands playing at the same time, and that was just super cool to be a part of. Um, but the story doesn't really end there. They ended up staying at my house that night, both bands, and uh, hung out all night and through the next day uh, just talking about music theory and Ozzy deep cuts and all kinds of crazy stuff. But our friendship with uh, Resin and Loom was one of my favorite friendships formed uh, with Forebode uh, during our time. Since the last recording, that was definitely a big highlight for me. So as far as favorite shows, um, obviously opening up for Orange Goblin was huge. Just the anticipation of all of it, and the, uh, you know, the 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 nerves that were that we were going through, and then getting up on stage and actually performing in front of the crowd of that size and a bill of that magnitude was awesome. Very satisfying. Um, the Serial Hawk show that we played was awesome too. That's just because that's one of my favorite bands that I've loved for a long time. So it was really nice to share the stage with them and chat with those guys afterwards. Um, I think the favorite show that I that we've ever played, at least for me personally, was our tiny little show in um, Foss Tavern in San Antonio. Uh, we played on a tiny floor. Everyone was kind of packed in around us. Uh, this is right before COVID hit too, so it was uh, you know it was kind of a surreal experience thinking back to it now. How everyone was so close, and we were you know people were like knocking into me while while I was playing bass, um, and I just remember looking over multiple times at Eddie and he had the biggest smile on his face which seeing him that happy got me happy got me pumped to keep playing songs and people's reactions and everything is, is always great and it's not it's not usually something that I have the luxury or the pleasure of kind of tuning into but being so closed in with everyone in that space just made it inevitable and then looking over and seeing TJ and Zach and Eddie just with huge gigantic smiles on their face made it really special so that was awesome I would say the first one that comes to mind is probably the show that we played in Dallas at the end of 2019 with Frozen Soul. That show was fucking badass. It was at the Gas Monkey Bar and Grill. It was an outside show. Fucking biggest stage we've ever played on. Uh, getting to play with Frozen Soul was 
awesome too because Chad is a great friend of mine and he somehow got us uh, to open the show which was fucking killer another one that comes to mind is gonna have to be uh, the show that we played in, in in San Antonio our last show that we played in front of people uh, at the Faust Tavern with our buddies from San Antonio Lower Depths um, it was a floor show, like the fucking, I mean, the bar was probably as big as this room that we're in, and we're in a tiny ass room. <laughs> but we set up next to the bathroom and just fucking rocked out. Uh, there was so many people there that like, the room was full of people. I mean, they were this close to my face. And uh, and there was just so many people there that like, you people couldn't get in from the outside. I even had a hard time getting in to go take a shit, so. Probably my favorite show um, that we played was at the Mohawk. Um, it was with just a, a couple of local bands. Um, I think we went second in the sound. It was inside at the Mohawk. A ton of people. The sound was great. I think it was around Christmas time, so everybody was like feeling good. And uh, that day, I think I like I had a beard. I shaved off the my chin, so I had these mutton chops. I just felt I felt good. Um, we we killed it, you know, and and that goes like with all of the other shows that we've played too. We played like uh, a couple shows that come to mind is at Come and Take It, where we open for some bands like uh, Pentagram and uh, Orange Goblin. Uh, and one of those in particular, I, I felt like I really dialed in with Guillermo, um, and that all the hits that we played, all the the notes was just dialed in with the bass guitar. Um, and meanwhile, the crowd was digging it, we were digging it, and we were just synced up. And the other guys were talking about Foss Tavern. That's like the opposite, because that show was on a ground floor in the smallest bar you can imagine, and it was equally as good. So we played some shows on these big stages with incredible sound, and then we played these other shows on the ground level of a of a 12 by 12 foot bar or you know a little bigger than that and they're it's all good you know they're all the same and just so good And then, motherfucker. Yeah. I didn't say that. I
My favorite song on the record is definitely The Pit of Suffering. I think that we accomplished um, a nice harmony between intense, brutal, abrasive, heavy metal and beautiful, melodic, um, tonal movement. I think that the, uh, the way it flows through the different phases of uh, dynamics and um, we even changed the key in the heaviest part of the song. Uh, I think we made some really cool musical choices. I'm really proud of that song. Yeah, I think um, I think my favorite song is definitely Bane of Hammers, uh, just because we go through so many different phases in that song, um, and physically it's it's a lot of fun to play. It's also very challenging to play um, on bass for me. So, yeah, I think Bane of Hammers is definitely one that I'm looking forward to recording, looking forward to seeing how it comes out, and it's always just a blast to play and practice and it shows. It's really hard to choose because these songs are just, at least to me, I feel like they're so much better than the songs in the first EP. And I loved all those songs, but I think I have to go with The Pit of Suffering, the title track, just because I've never played a song with any of my bands that has made me feel so emotional on stage when I play it. I think the first time we played it for anyone was when we went to Carcass John's house to play his, his birthday. We basically just set up in his living room and it was a couple, like a month after my grandma had passed away and I was thinking about that while we played that song for the first time and it was like, what the fuck dude, this song is making me feel like, like an emotional wreck. Um, which means I should hate it, but I think it's, I think it is like really special that it makes me feel that way. So that's gotta be my favorite song. The favorite song on this one well, the one playing right now, the one Eddie's tracking to, uh, Bane of Hammers. Kid. It's got the best story, I think. Um, and as far as like, you know, what we do as musicians, it has it all. It has everything that you need if you're a metalhead. Um, Bane of Hammers is long. There's different parts to it. The ending just kind of sums up the whole essence of this band, um, you know, and the story is about a guy who his wife is captured or killed or something like that. And so he goes to get revenge. And then by the end of the song, he doesn't make it, you know, so it's not very conventional as far as stories go. But if you listen to the song, that is kind of what happens with our ins uh, with our instruments too, is because we end in a whole different energy than how we started. We take we take you to a place, and then it ends kind of in a different way than you'd expect, just like the story. Yeah, you know, immediate future for the band, I think we're all just very excited to record the album, you know, and then do the uh, the things that come after recording, like uh, figuring out the album artwork and the layout and what we're going to release it on and all that, who we're going to shop it to. Um, obviously, you know, uh, we are losing Eddie, which is unfortunate, you know, he's uh, he's been a massive part of the band becoming what it is today. But um, as far as, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, Forebode continues going, right? Um, as long as I have a pulse, the band doesn't go anywhere, and I'm going to fucking live forever. So, we keep going. Eddie is unfortunately moving away. Um, so, you know, we have to bring a new guitar player up to speed uh, as soon as we can. I mean, shows probably still aren't happening anytime soon, so we have a lot of time to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we would love to play shows as soon as possible. I think that you know, is, is another goal of ours is to play shows with, with our new guitar player as soon as we can. Um, 
And then, you know, long term, uh, a fucking full length, man. I mean, shit's kind of happened with this band at certain times where members have kind of come and gone to where it's kind of had to stick to, a, you know, an EP here and an EP now again. So actually doing a full length, you know, with some of the other material that we haven't recorded yet uh, would be great. I mean, that'd be fucking awesome. But, um, you know, another thing would be to tour somewhere. We, we planned in 2020 to really try to play outside of Austin as much as we could because we've played here so much and that fucking didn't happen because of the pandemic. But, um, yeah, going on, going on a, on a small tour, you know, to like Louisiana or Florida and back would be fucking cool. I mean, uh, thinking about it is making me all tingly in, in my, in my penis. So yeah, it'd be very cool to tour and we've done it before we've done shows out of town. So, I'd like to just continue doing that, you know, playing shows nearby and continue just getting farther and farther away from Austin um, and building networks with other bands, other cities. But what's cool is in our downtime, we're doing this, we're recording an EP and it sounds like it's going to be massive, you know, and I think that this is the kind of thing, this is the best you can really do, especially um, without knowing what the future really does look like. But obviously, I'd like to tour. I'd like to see some sort of record deal or record label being interested in us. Um, and until things get back to normal, I think we're on track, you know. Lastly, I just want to say, love you, Eddie. Thanks for everything. Thanks for committing time to this band. Uh, thanks for blowing me and Garma out of the water on day one, all the way to the last day. We're gonna miss the fucking shit out of you, but we'll see you again. Love you, bro. Can't come and get out of it.